Hey guys, and welcome to another JavaScript practice problems for complete beginners. In this problem, it's a little bit more complicated than the last ones, um, so make sure you touch up on all your basic JavaScript knowledge. But for the most part, it's easier if I explain what this problem is on the whiteboard, so let's go ahead and break it down over there. So I'm going to refer to this problem as the spiral matrix problem, and I found it on one of the subreddits called Daily Coding Challenges, which I highly recommend you check out. Every day they post um, different challenges for beginners, intermediate, and advanced programmers. But anyway, so this problem is creating a spiral matrix where the matrix is going to be n by n. So if n is 5, it's going to be a 5 by 5 2D array, our matrix. And what this basically does is it spirals from starting at the top left, going right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you see how it spirals in a clockwise manner until you reach this row, which is this, the first row, or index one of the row, and then you start counting inwards again. So this one will be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And notice that your middle number should be equal to n times n. So if n is equal to five, our middle number should be, you know, five times five, which is 25. So to visualize how we'd actually solve this on the whiteboard, um, let's go ahead and redraw this matrix, but let's do a smaller one. So a three by three for n is equal to three. So I'll go ahead and change this and say, n is equal to three. And I'll go ahead and just draw out the grid so we have a better reference as to what we are doing. So if I were to draw a three by three matrix, First of all, solving this by hand, what exactly would you do, right? So you start at the first slot in the top left, which would be zero by zero, or zero comma zero in programming terms. And we need to have a count. So in this case, we'll have like a count equal to one. So that's the number that we put into the cell. So in this case, we'll say one. And the algorithm is we go ahead and move in the right directions. So in this case, we need to increment the columns by one. So increment by one, change this to the next one and go ahead and put a two there. And then again, increment by one, which means we need to set a three here. And now at this point, when we reach the end of this, so remember this is index zero, one and two. If the next one we're about to place is equal to n, that means we're about to go out of bounds. So what we need to do is just turn right. So instead of going from left to right, we need to go up to down. So again, I'll continue doing three, four, five. And again, we hit the very bottom row, which is going to be, the next one would be n of three. So again, we just need to turn right again. So we have six, seven. And in this case, we reach the, um, I guess this would be negative one, if you were to think about it, index of the columns, which again means that you need to take another right turn where you hit an eight and this is where the interesting part is is if you already place a number and the one that's expected to be the next one so in this case the row above already has a one so therefore we need to turn right again and place a nine so by hand you know this is pretty simple to do but then to convert it to a program you kind of have to know or keep track of the direction you're going. So in this case, we can say, you know, the direction in the I direction is equal to zero, because we're not changing rows. And the direction in the J direction is going to be one, because at each iteration we go to the right one, but we stay on the same row. So if I were to go ahead and just undo all these, and kind of walk you through it one more time, so we start off with the one here, we're in the J direction going one. We do it again, J direction is still one. We go here, and that's when we need to turn right, which means that we swap these, and we set this one equal to the negative of the previous. So we'll go four, five, we swap them again. And remember, DJ is gonna become the negative of what DI was before. So then we go six, seven, swap them again, 
So negative one and zero. We go up, swap them one more time. We have zero and one, and again, that's going to the right direction, which leaves us like that. So one more thing to point out is how many times did we actually step? Well, we stepped nine times. So we obviously need a for loop, which is going to go nine times. So in your JavaScript program, keep that in mind. We're gonna need some type of variables to keep track of the direction we're going. And then each step, we need to kind of update the direction if we hit an edge case. So that should have been a pretty good overview of how the algorithm works and what problem we're trying to solve. So let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript implementation now. So implementing this problem is a little bit more tricky than some of the other problems we've seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to break this down into smaller sub-problems so that you can understand like what's going on through my head as I try to implement it. So the first thing we wanna do is implement a function which is used for printing out grids. So if I were to go ahead and say write function, print grid, pass it in a grid as a parameter, and then up here I can say for each row in the grid, I wanna go ahead and print out grid of that row, join every element with a string empty array, or with an empty space, and that should be good enough for looping through every row and just printing out the columns. So let's go ahead and test, it, test this out. I'll go ahead and say print grid. I wanna pass it an empty array and then one two comma three four so if i were to run this we should see one two three four print out in the bottom so node spiral grid and we see one two three four cool so we have a function which can be used for printing out our grid second thing we want to do is let's create a function for creating a 2d array because we're going to need one and it's not as trivial to do it in javascript as it is in such language such as like c or java or C sharp or something. So for a second function, let's go ahead and say function create 2D grid. And I'll say size is an argument or parameter. So for here, what we can do is we can say let i is equal to size. And we say constant grid is equal to an empty array. And then while i minus minus is true, we're just going to go ahead and grid dot push new array and that's going to be a new array of size and then go ahead and return grid down here and to make this simple let's go ahead and put it in one line here so again we can test this out by just going ahead and calling print grid of create 2d grid of size let's say five and this should print out a grid with everything initialized to null or zero or something like that so let's go ahead and say run the program and we get an empty grid with spaces. All right, so we have a method for printing a grid. We have a method for creating a 2D grid, which we'll need later on. Now for the fun part, let's go ahead and create a new function called create spiral. And that's also going to take a size or something. So I'll just say in. And instead of calling create 2D grid, I'll say create spiral. And what we wanna do here is first create a grid so create 2D grid of in, which kind of gives us a nice uh, starting point or a blank grid or canvas that we can start putting those numbers into. So we have the grid here, and then we need to start declaring some variables that are gonna be used later on. So let's say let current number, which would C in our whiteboard example, equal to one. We could say let I is equal to zero, let j is equal to zero, because remember we start in the top left corner, so row zero, i zero, and then column zero, which is j zero. And then we also need to keep track of the direction, so I'll say let di equal zero and let dj equal one, because remember we need to go to the right, I guess it would be this way in the camera, but. Okay, so we have a five by five grid being created, starting with the number one, starting in the top left corner, and then we're gonna move in the right direction. So to kind of implement that logic, what we need to do is just while current number is less than or equal to n times n, because remember we need to go to n times n, which is gonna be the center. We need to do some logic, and then finally we need to return the spiral. In fact, I'll rename grid to spiral. 
so it makes more sense. <clears throat> so now for the logic, we need to first put a number inside that location. So we'll say spiral i and j is equal to current number. So that's, that should make sense, right? We're just putting a one in that top left corner. And then first we need to check if we're at the far right corner. So if i plus di, or sorry, if j plus dj is equal to n, therefore we're at the very far right edge, or our next move will put us over the edge. Or if i plus di is equal to n, which means that we're going to about to go out of bounds on the bottom. And then finally, we need to check the very left side of the grid and say if j plus dj is equal to negative 1, that means we're about to go outside the grid. And then finally, if we're about to go to a spot that we've already seen before, we just say or spiral i plus di and then j plus dj, which will check the next spot we're about to go to to see if there's something already in it. So yeah, this is a pretty big if statement. Probably not used to seeing an if statement this big. But basically, we're checking the right row, or we're checking the right um, grid side, we're checking the bottom, and we're checking the left. And then we're also checking if we're about to put it into a space we've already seen. So hopefully you understand that. Um, if not, maybe review it some more, go back to the whiteboard and make sure you understand what's going on. Otherwise, let's move on. When we do have the ability, or if we know that we're about to move into one of these spots, we need to turn right, remember? So let's go ahead and say const temp di is equal to di. So we keep track of it. And then we just update di is equal to dj, and then dj is equal to temp di. And again, like we saw on the whiteboard, we just kind of swap and then negate, swap, negate, swap, and negate. And then finally, we need to increment i in that direction, and then also increment j in that direction. So we actually take the step and go to the next move. Or if we just turn right, we turn right and then take the next step. And then when the loop continues, we place a number, check if we need to turn right, place a value. Go back to the top, and then continue doing that until you hit 25 in this case, which is the very last character we need to place. And then finally return the spiral. <sighs> cool, so hopefully if I did that all correctly, if I were to rerun this program, it should print out the whole grid. And right now that seemed to have locked up. I think the issue is, is I'm not incrementing current number. I forgot to add plus plus here. So it's just a while loop going on forever. So now if I were to rerun this, awesome. So we look at the grid here, one, two, three, four, five, and then at the corner, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right. Cool, so we just implemented it from the whiteboard in JavaScript. We have the spiral grid printing out and really this, wasn't that complicated. I mean, we have these helper functions, which is loop over the grid and print it out. We have this helper function, create 2D grid, which just creates us a 2D array. And then finally, we create the spiral, which we follow the whiteboard logic verbatim. And then the only part that's kind of confusing when you need to learn how to do is convert that you know manual process on pen and paper to how you do it in JavaScript. And that's where you have to make sure you understand like your variables, keeping track of stuff, incrementing stuff, etc. So yeah, if you have any questions on that, uh, leave me a comment. Otherwise, please subscribe and like this video and then um, look forward to more videos in the future. All right, thanks for watching.